Aloha at Ikomomai. Today we have a 1996 Toyota 4Runner with a 3.4 liter V6 and this vehicle has multiple problems. This happens to be our family vehicle and I'm finally getting around to look at it. So let's dive right in. Initially when I popped the hood I saw that this hose right here, this induction hose, had a huge break in it right here. So we went ahead and replaced this one, and that certainly would account for the hesitation. However, a tear right here will not account for a no start. All right, so I hooked up my scan tool to the Forerunner and discovered that there's no communications with the computer. So. I went to find some data and I got really frustrated trying to find data on this vehicle. So I found data from multiple sources but none of them were comprehensive and in addition to that the wire colors on the schematics that I was looking at did not line up what was actually on the vehicle. So I went ahead and made this simplified schematic just to help me out and hopefully it will help you out. The wire colors on the schematic are specific to this car. This is a 1996 Toyota 4Runner with a 3.4 liters. And this is an ignition system and computer wiring diagram simplified. So before I plugged my scan tool in and discovered that there was no communication, I was thinking that we might have an igniter problem because that's very common with Toyotas. But then I turned my attention away from the igniter because a faulty igniter will not cause a no communication with the ECM. I also knew that the check engine light or the malfunction indicator lamp right here was not working and had never been working from the time that uh, we got the car. So the question was, was the ECM not able to turn the malfunction indicator light on? And that was a question. So I had a no start, I had a no communication, I had a no malfunction indicator light. So I went and I pulled the computer out. The computer on this car is located behind the glove box. I pulled that out and I started doing all of the standard tests that you would do for no communication problems. I began checking all the powers and grounds. All the powers and grounds were good except for this violet colored line coming from the malfunction indicator lamp. So the malfunction indicator lamp has battery power going to it, through it, to the ECM and then to ground and that's what turns the mill lamp on. So I was not receiving power input from the malfunction indicator lamp. So I went ahead and took apart the instrument cluster and found that the malfunction indicator lamp was genuinely burned out. So I replaced that lamp, put the uh, instrument cluster back together and then I had power coming to my ECM from the mill lamp. Now as I was playing with this, I was banging the computer around and suddenly I got communications. My scan tool was still hooked up. I suddenly, it suddenly came to life and I had communications just by banging the ECM around. So that told me I had an internal problem in the ECM. So I pulled the ECM out of the vehicle and this is what I found. Lots of rust on this thing. Looks like water has been getting to it. So let's take this thing apart and have a look see what it looks like on the inside. Actually, I'm not sure if water was actually getting in here or not. The inside looks pretty clean compared to the outside. It may just have been outside surface rust. But it was in this lower corner over here. So let's see if I can zoom in here. So if you've never seen the inside of a control unit, this is what it looks like. You can see all the chips, all the diodes, all the resistors printed circuit board, but I want to draw your attention to this right in here, C406. I'm not sure if that's a transistor or a capacitor or what that is, but anyway, that unit right there, right underneath here on the printed circuit board, you can see that it's burnt. This whole area right in here is black and burnt. It's not nice and clean. 
like the other part of the printed circuit board is. And so there's also a, quite a bit of corrosion coming out at C406. So whatever that unit is, and I think it might be a transistor, that thing is dead. Or at least not making a good contact intermittently because when I did the tap test with a screwdriver on this thing, it would intermittently work and then it would stop working again. And that's why I pulled this apart to take a look. So this whole area right down in here is burnt all the way over to here probably can't see that all the way over here underneath all the way in this whole section looks burnt so we went ahead and ordered a used unit and I'm gonna take that apart and look at that really quick right now and see what that looks like all right so here we have the units side by side they physically look the same the connectors look the same all the numbers on the tag match so before we put this one in Let's go ahead and take it apart to make sure it doesn't actually look like this one. Which is clearly burned in this whole area right down here. Take a look at that. Ah, uh, hallelujah, that looks much better. C406 does not look corroded. And I don't see any burn marks around the base. And in fact, I don't see any burn marks any place else on this unit, nor do I see any corrosion. So, we're going to go ahead and use this one. And hopefully there's nothing else wrong with this particular unit. Okay, let's put this cover back together and let's put it in the vehicle. So these are the mounting brackets for inside the vehicle. Okay, let's put this in the car now. Okay, so here is where the computer mounts behind the glove box. The back of the computer is supported by this bracket right here. And then we have mounting screw A and B right here. And there's four connectors here that get plugged into the unit. This ECM into its mounting brackets. Slide it all the way in. Well, there goes our warning sirens for our approaching hurricane. Lovely. Okay, slide it in place. Now let's put the mounting screws in. Put our plugs in. Uh, the plugs only fit in one way. You can't mess them up. They'll only go into one slot. Push it in until it clicks. Okay. That computer is in. Let's go ahead and see if this vehicle will start. Hallelujah. Let's ensure uh, check engine light proper operation here. Okay, check engine light has come on. Okay, awesome. Vehicle starts right up, check engine light goes off. Okay, so now that we have the ECM securely mounted, make sure all the wires and stuff are kind of out of the way. And we put this trim piece back in. Make sure that there's no wires hanging down. Now you can go ahead and lift the glove box back up into place. There's two tabs on either side, one here and one here that you've got to get beyond these perches for it. So there we go. Okay, that's working good.